come out there or for any wreckage company to come out there, they're going to charge a fee to clean up like the mess that you created, whether you spilt freight all over the, the interstate, things of that nature. They got to, you know, get manpower and, and time and equipment uh, to clean that stuff up. So I had a rollover before that happened where, um, you know, freight spilt onto the interstate and, you know, insurance covered the, the, the damage to the truck, right, and repair and replace the truck. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. We've learned our languages through the World Wide Web. My guy, what's good this morning? What up, Lockout? Oh, uh, man. Hey, thanks for the time right quick. Um, no more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. I got a, I got a, I got a couple of, I got a couple of questions for you. All right. So you, you've been an owner op. <clears throat> you've been an owner op for uh, quite some time, right? I mean, you, you, you've been, you've been doing the damn thing for a little bit over what five years now, right? Yeah, I've been leasing. Uh, well, I mean, I, well, I was leasing. I now just run my fleet, but. Yeah, I mean, depends on who you ask if that's owner op or not, but yeah, leasing. All right. So I, I want to ask you about um about your your progression into owner operation. Um of course you came from Prime, uh, and then you went off and did your own thing, created uh parts motor group, and um and of course, you know, I met a few of your drivers as well, man. Um but I want to ask you as a owner op because you know I'm 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 watching videos these days and certain people is over here talking about that they're looking for drivers for their trucks. Now I looked at them and I'm over here saying to myself like I don't know if I want to drive for you because of the fact that you know you're a YouTuber, you 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 presenting yourself one way and now you want to present yourself another way, how are you going to find qualified drivers? So I thought about you, and I said to myself, you was a YouTuber. You came to YouTube. You you said, yo, I'm looking for drivers and all like that. And, you know, you made a few videos about the, about the inconsistencies of getting good qualified drivers. Loshan, man, t you know, talk to me and explain to me how hard and what was some of the things you went through as being a popular YouTuber looking for drivers to drive your fleet? Mm. Well, I think it's, it, I think it's hard in itself trying to find drivers uh, nowadays anyway, for the most part, um, whether, whether you be a YouTuber or not, I think, uh, for the most part, drivers are, are looking for uh, the next big thing, if you will, if that makes any type of sense. Um, and I've seen it where drivers will leave a carrier uh, for two cents more a mile um, and really not understanding like it, that really isn't a drastic move, um, more so probably of a lateral move than anything. Um, so for me, when it came to trying to find drivers and trying to get people to drive for me, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of struggle piece, right? Um, because like you said, people driving for somebody that's a YouTuber, um, not knowing like if they do something, I guess a lot of drivers too, when you work for a YouTuber, they feel like if you do something bad with that, with that person, then, you know, with the following they have, they, they have the potential of exposing you. Um, which I guess that can go both ways, right? When we look at it, if you do a driver wrong and they feel like getting on the internet and, you know, uh, you know, airing your airing your business out, then I guess you know it can go both ways. So, um, but I don't I don't operate like that. And to be honest with you, um, you know, people air out companies all the time, regardless of of who they are. So it doesn't that really never played a big factor into it. But um, back to I guess your your question in general, trying to to find good drivers, man, it's, it's really hard. Um, you know. I, I guess what you can try to do is try what I've come to find be trying to be successful with it is offering consistency, uh, consistent paycheck, pulling for a consistent carrier, uh, having a consistent contract that keeps them constantly moving or at least keeps them making a consistent paycheck to where they're able to handle their bills. Um, a lot of companies, trucking companies don't offer that. 
uh, or if they do offer it, it's it, they tell you one thing and it's a completely different story once they get there. But then once again, I look at that too as like it depends on the type of driver that you are. If you're a hustler, I think that you can go anywhere and be successful driving, right? Um, and if you're a lazy person and you go somewhere, you, you're still going to make excuses on why you're not making enough money there. So, All right. Um, All right. But as far as like finding drivers, it's really tough though. You know what I mean? Regardless, I think of really who you are. Uh, or where you're standing at in the industry because drivers, uh, the turnover rate in trucking is so high. It's, it's you know, two two more cents offered to a driver and a driver will leave you. Now, Lo Shine, you you mentioned the fact that you you know you had your own struggles with with getting drivers and having drivers to uh, drive for you. Um, some of which you know I follow. Uh, I followed uh, uh, you when you you know you was talking about it. Uh, one in one particular video that I seen you uh, that you, that I seen you in, uh, you mentioned the fact that one of the drivers actually rolled your truck over, and you was you was explaining to the people how that affected your bottom line as far as getting the truck repaired or even getting it uh, totaled out with the insurance, and then you had a little bit of issues with that particular driver. What I mean, what would I mean when when drivers do stuff like that, you know, tear up your truck, bring your truck, abandon your truck and just leave you out in the wind. How hard is that for you to make all that up on the bottom line? Um. So, yeah, it just depends. You know what I'm saying? Um. A lot of people don't understand about the the severity of rolling the truck over. Um. It's not just. You know, a lot of people would think of it like, oh, well, you got insurance. That's what insurance is for. Insurance to, you know, total it out and pay for the truck and you'd be good to go. You'll get a different truck. But um, when you deal with rollover situations, uh, particularly when you have freight in the truck, um, then you, there's a thing that, <laughs> that that goes untold about that there's a cleanup fee to that shit too, right? Or, excuse me, I don't know if you're doing the show, but my yeah, apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you good, you good, you good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a cleanup fee to that. So uh, for DOT to come out there or for any wreckage company to come out there, they're going to charge a fee to clean up like the mess that you created, whether you spilt freight all over the, the interstate, things of that nature. They got to, you know, get manpower and, and time and equipment uh, to clean that stuff up. So I had a rollover before that happened where, um, you know, freight spilt onto the interstate and, you know, insurance covered the, the the damage to the truck right and repair and replace the truck but also there was a fifty thousand uh, dollar fee for cleanup for them to come out there and clean all of the, the the freight off of the highway and you know put it in a dumpster and stuff like that so that little that little piece right there um is, is detrimental to the bottom line right you're talking about fifty thousand dollars that you have to come out of pocket for that insurance doesn't cover um to pay for you know cleanup for a uh, incident from a rollover. So it's, it's stuff like that that isn't told in this trucking industry that drivers may not may or may not know, which I think most of them don't know that. They don't. It's more to it than just the truck being rolled over and you thinking like, oh, it's all right, they're repaid. I mean, they're re, you know, they they got insurance and they need to repay, uh, replace the unit. But you're not realizing like the, somebody got to clean this crap up too, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's a fee to that. And when you're at the... The, at the demise of somebody else uh, setting the prices on it, you're you're pretty much a victim to that. So, yeah, that's that's one situation where I've had one of my trucks all over, and um, you know, insurance didn't cover that cleanup. A fifty thousand dollars I had to come out of pocket for that. I, I know I know that hit you hard, and it is true. I you know I I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I own my own uh, roadside business, and I understand that like one incident will pretty much bankrupt you like if i if i go and do a lockout on like an expensive car or something like that one of them one of them five figures six figures cars and i go and do a lockout on it and i mess up the the locking mechanism even though they know they 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 should know that that's what's going might happen but still they, they it, it still hits me because they're going to they're going to go after my insurance. You know, the insurance is going to pay for it, but the insurance is going to go up on me and, 
you know, and and that that company that I'm contracted with that sent me out there to do it, you know, they might not send me no more no no more calls because of that incident. That then that hits the bottom line. Like you know, I I was let's just say I was making this type of money, and then all of a sudden, I'm I'm not making no type of money. How how did that hit you? Mm-hmm. How how did that hit you financially, man? I mean, you know, those type of hits, uh, they hurt, especially when you're like a mom and pop. You're not a mega carrier. Um, you know, you don't have, uh, you know, a gajillion trucks out here on the road. You know, you got, you know, a small fleet, five to ten trucks. Um, one accident such of that nature or one setback like that can, can really, you know, turn a company inside out and, and can cause bankruptcy. Uh, excuse me, cause bankruptcy. Um, luckily we had the funding to be able to sustain that for us, but I'm be honest with you, if I didn't have the funding to sustain that situation at that time, yeah, that would have, would have took, taken me out. So, um, you know, it's where we speak about, you know, kind of being financial literate when running a business, being able to put back money for situations that, that are going to occur. It's not if they're going to occur, it's when they're going to occur because they are going to happen. Uh, so that you are prepared for situations of that nature. Um, like I said, if I wasn't, if I, at that time, if I wasn't financially stable, uh, that would have been a detrimental blow to my business and could have potentially taken me out of business. Man, low shine, yo, bro. Thank you very much for the time, man. I really do appreciate it. I'm always, you know, I'm always fortunate to know people that's in the business that knows what they're talking about, and I can always, you know, I can always go to them. And 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 get you know the the good conversations uh, with you, and I appreciate you uh, allowing me allowing me to conversate with you, man. I, I really do appreciate it. How how is your how you know I I miss you on YouTube, and I understand that's for a reason. But um, how how is Parts Mortar Group uh, right now, sir? Um. I mean, right now we still got our same contract that, that we're utilizing uh, the UPS freight. Well, you know, UPS freight got bought out by T-Force. So we're still um, going strong with them. Uh, been in that contract now for, I want to say, going on almost three years. So still doing that, still doing the same thing that we're doing. I uh, think we're, we're, we're going through kind of like the same pains that everybody else in the industry is going through, you know, with fuel, fuel prices, rates, things of that nature. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're no different than you know, what everybody else is feeling out, out here as far as, you know, just trying to maintain, trying to um, stay in business, uh, you know, as much as possible. And um, yeah, so, you know, we're down to, I think at one time we had like 10 trucks. Um, we've downsized ourselves, of course, due to, you know, the, the economy and how things are looking right now. So we downsized ourselves down to five units, five trucks, and we're just trying to stand fast at that and see, uh, you know, what transpires from, within the industry, you know, um, quarter to quarter and, and see where it, where that. All right. All right. My guy. Into building mode, so to that. All right. My guy. Hey, I, I heard through the grapevine that, that you was a poker player in, uh, in your past lifetime, bruh. <laughs> yeah, was, that's, that's a true fact. Uh, you, okay. You, 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 you think I can, you, you think, uh, you think we can meet up at the tables one of these days, man? Because I don't know if I can take you, but I, I, I wouldn't mind sitting at the table with you. Yeah, it's very possible that you could take me. I haven't played poker now probably in like close to like two years. So I might have forgotten a couple of things and you might be able to bluff me off a hand nowadays. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's very possible. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, low shine, man. It's a beautiful conversation, man. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Shout out to you, man. I I've always been a faithful follower of you. Uh been watching you, been learning from you and everything. And again, I really do appreciate uh, the opportunity that you're giving me to have you on my channel, man. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, as always. Appreciate you, Lock, man. Keep doing what you do, man. I will, man. Stay up and happy new year, bro. You too, man. 2023. Let's go. Let's go. All right, now. All right, peace out. Thinking of a master plan. 
This ain't nothing but sweat inside my hand So I dig into my pocket, all my money spent Dig deeper, still coming up with lint So I start my mission, leave my residence Thinking how could I get some dead presidents I need money, I used to be a stick-up kid So I think of all the devious things I did Used to roll up, this is a hole up Nothing funny, stop smiling, we still